So what makes a number prime? It's divisible only by 1 and itself. The first few are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on. Notice 2 is the only even prime because every other even number is divisible by 2. Now to find primes, you write out all the numbers, cross out multiples of 2, then multiples of 3, then multiples of 5, and whatever's left, those are your primes. Simple enough for small numbers. Now what about the gaps between primes? Well, as numbers get bigger, primes get rarer. Between 1 and 10, we've got 4 primes. Between 1 and 100, we've got 25. Between 1 and 1000, we've got 168. The pattern? Primes thin out, but they never stop. The prime number theorem tells us that the number of primes less than n is approximately n divided by the natural logarithm of n. So there are roughly 50 million primes less than 1 billion. Mersenne primes. These are primes of the form 2 raised to the power of p minus 1, where p itself is prime. So let's try it. 2 raised to the power of 2 minus 1 equals 3. That's prime. 2 raised to the power of 3 minus 1 equals 7. Prime. 2 raised to the power of 5 minus 1 equals 31. Prime. 2 raised to the power of 11 minus 1 equals 2047, which equals 23 times 89. Not prime. Okay. The largest known Mersenne prime is 2 raised to the power of a 136,279,841 minus 1. This number has 41,024,320 digits. If you tried to write it out, one digit per second, it would take you over a year of non-stop writing. It's basically incomprehensible. So these are the rules. A prime number p is divisible only by 1. And p, Euclid proved there are infinitely many primes around 300 BC using a beautiful contradiction proof. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic says every number breaks down into a unique product of primes. The prime number theorem gives us pi of n approximately equals n divided by the natural logarithm of n, where pi of n counts primes up to n. And Mersenne primes are defined as m sub p equals 2 raised to the power of p minus 1, where both p and m sub p are prime. Only 52 Mersenne primes have ever been found. The largest is m sub 136,279,841. Level 2. Twin primes are pairs of primes that differ by exactly 2. So 3 and 5 are twin primes. 5 and 7 are twin primes. 11 and 13, twin primes. Now we've also got cousin primes, which differ by 4, like 3 and 7, or 7 and 11. And sexy primes, which differ by 6, like 5 and 11, or 7 and 13. The name comes from the Latin word for 6. Sex. Okay. Now the twin prime conjecture says there are infinitely many twin primes, but nobody's proven it yet. This gets wild in a minute. So let's count them. The first twin prime pairs are 3 and 5, 5 and 7, 11 and 13. They seem pretty common at first. Between 1 and 100, there are 8 twin prime pairs. Not bad, right? Between 1 and 1000, there are 35 pairs. Between 1 and 10,000, there are 205 pairs. Between 1 and 100,000, there are 1,224 pairs. And here's the crazy part. There are 808,675,888,577,436 twin prime pairs less than 10, raised to the power of 18. That's over 808 trillion pairs. Still seems like a lot, right? But now let's look at prime constellations. These are groups of primes all clustered close together. A prime triplet is three primes where the smallest and largest differ by six, like 5, 7, 11, or 7, 11, 13, or 11, 13, 17. Using this rule up at the top, we can find prime quadruplets too. These are four primes of the form p, p plus 2, p plus 6, and p plus 8. Then 101, 103, 107, 109. Then 191, 193, 197, 199. These are way rarer. There are only 166 prime quadruplets less than 10,000, and only 38 less than 1,000. The largest known prime quadruplet, that's over a quintillion. Unbelievably rare as numbers get larger. Now imagine looking for a prime constellation with 10 primes all within 50 of each other, or 20 primes within 100. The bigger the constellation, the rarer they become. It's ridiculous how sparse they get. Some mathematicians believe certain patterns might stop appearing entirely after a certain point, but we don't know for sure. Level 3, Sophie Germain primes. These are primes, p where 2 times p plus 1 is also prime. So you've got a prime, you double it, add 1, and if that's also prime, boom, you've got a Sophie Germain prime. The number 2 times p plus 1 is called a safe prime. These primes are massively important in cryptography because they create groups that are hard to crack. Named after the French mathematician Sophie Germain, who studied them in the early 1800s. This will make sense in a minute. Let's try some examples. Start with p equals 2. So 2 times 2 plus 1 equals 5. Both 2 and 5 are prime. Now try p equals 3. 
2 times 3 plus 1 equals 7. Both prime. Another one. Try p equals 5. 2 times 5 plus 1 equals 11. Both prime. Keep going. p equals 11 gives us 23. p equals 23 gives us 47. p equals 29 gives us 59. Not every prime is a Sophie Germain prime, like p equals 7 gives us 15, which isn't prime. And p equals 13 gives us 27, also not prime. Still manageable, right? But here's where it gets huge. The largest known Sophie Germain prime is 2 multiplied by 18,543,637,900,515 multiplied by 2 raised to the power of 666,667 minus 1. This number has over 200,000 digits. Primorial primes. These are primes made from multiplying other primes together. A primorial, written as p-sharp, is the product of all primes up to and including p. So 5-sharp means you multiply 2 times 3 times 5. A primorial prime is when p-sharp plus 1 or p-sharp minus 1, turns out to be prime. Let's calculate some. Start with 2-sharp. That's just 2. Now 2 minus 1 equals 1, which isn't prime. But 2 plus 1 equals 3, which is prime. Okay, now try 3-sharp. That's 2 times 3, which equals 6. 6 minus 1 equals 5, prime. And 6 plus 1 equals 7, also prime. Both directions work. Now 5-sharp. That's 2 times 3 times 5, which equals 30. 30 minus 1 equals 29, prime. 30 plus 1 equals 31, also prime, still working. Now 7 sharp equals 2 times 3 times 5 times 7, which is 210. 210 minus 1 equals 209, which is 11 times 19, not prime. But 210 plus 1 equals 211, which is prime. So sometimes only one direction works. Not so crazy yet, right? But here's where they become unbelievably sparse. 11 sharp equals 2310. 11 sharp minus 1 equals 2309, which is prime. 13 sharp plus 1 is prime. 13 sharp minus 1 is not. We keep going. 19 sharp minus 1 is prime. The thing is, we've only found 10 primorial primes of the form p sharp minus 1. The largest is 3,267,113 sharp minus 1. And we've only found 8 primorial primes of the form p sharp plus 1. The largest known is 392,113 sharp plus 1. That number has 169,966 digits. Level 5. Fibonacci primes. The Fibonacci sequence is where each number is the sum of the previous two. Start with 1, 1, then 1 plus 1 equals 2, then 1 plus 2 equals 3, then 2 plus 3 equals 5, and so on. So the sequence goes 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233. A Fibonacci prime is a Fibonacci number that's also prime. Now here's an interesting property. If f sub n is prime, then n must be prime, with one exception for f sub 4 equals 3. So f sub 2 equals 1, not prime. f sub 3 equals 2, prime. f sub 5 equals 5, prime. f sub 7 equals 13, prime. You only need to check Fibonacci numbers where the index is prime. Let's list them out. f sub 3 equals 2, prime. f sub 4 equals 3, prime. And that's our exception. f sub 5 equals 5, prime f sub 7 equals 13, prime, f sub 11 equals 89, prime, f sub 13 equals 233, prime, f sub 17 equals 1597, prime, f sub 23 equals 28657, prime, f sub 29 equals 514229, prime, f sub 43 equals 433 million, 434,437, prime, f sub 47 equals 2 billion, 971 million, 215,000, 73, prime. The pattern seems simple, right? Just keep going down the Fibonacci sequence and check if the ones at prime indices are prime. But testing gets harder because Fibonacci numbers grow exponentially fast. F sub 100 already has 21 digits. Now here's where it becomes unbelievably difficult to verify. F sub 81 has 17 digits, and it's prime. F sub 131 has 27 digits, prime. F sub 137 has 29 digits, prime. F sub 2971 has 621 digits and it's prime. To check if a number with hundreds of digits is prime, you need probabilistic primality tests like the miller rabin test or lucas lamer style tests. F sub 4787 has 1000 digits and it's prime. The largest known Fibonacci prime is F sub 104911, which has 21925 digits. Only 34 Fibonacci primes have ever been found, and we've searched up to F sub n for n in the hundreds of thousands. Level 6. Fermat primes. These ones are almost extinct, 
a Fermat number is defined as f sub n equals 2 raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of n plus 1. So you take 2, raise it to the power of 2 raised to the power of n, then add 1. The mathematician Pierre de Fermat conjectured that all Fermat numbers are prime. He checked the first few and they worked, so he assumed the pattern would continue forever. Let's calculate them. f sub 0 equals 2 raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of 0, plus 1. So 2 raised to the power of 0 is 1 and 2 raised to the power of 1 is 2 plus 1 equals 3. Prime. f sub 1 equals 2 raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of 1 plus 1. That's 2 raised to the power of 2 plus 1, which is 4 plus 1 equals 5. Prime. f sub 2 equals 2 raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of 2 plus 1. That's 2 raised to the power of 4 plus 1, which is 16 plus 1 equals 17. Prime. f sub 3 equals 2 raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of 3 plus 1. That's 2 raised to the power of 8 plus 1, which is 256 plus 1 equals 257. Prime. F sub 4 equals 2 raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of 4 plus 1. That's 2 raised to the power of 16 plus 1, which is 65,536 plus 1 equals 65,537. Still prime. So far so good, right? Fermat must have thought he'd found an infinite family of primes, but then disaster. F sub 5 equals 2 raised to the power of 2 raised to the power of 5 plus 1. That's 2 raised to the power of 32 plus 1, which equal looks like it could be prime. But in 1732, Euler discovered it factors as 641 times 6 million, 700,000, 417, not prime. The pattern broke, and it gets worse. F sub 6 is composite. F sub 7 is composite. F sub 8 is composite. In fact, every single Fermat number from F sub 5 up to F sub 32 has been tested, and every single one is composite. Not a single new Fermat prime has been discovered in over 350 years. Possibly no more exist at all. Level 7. The Riemann Hypothesis. The Riemann Hypothesis is a statement about where the zeros of a complex function called the Riemann zeta function lie. Specifically, it says all non-trivial zeros have a real part equal to 1 half. Now I know what you're thinking. What does this have to do with primes? This sounds like complex analysis, not number theory. But it's actually the deepest mystery about primes and I'll explain why. Riemann zeta function is defined as zeta of s equals the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n raised to the power of s. You can see the formula on screen. Now this function has a deep connection to prime numbers through Euler's product formula. The zeta function equals the product over all primes p of 1 over open parenthesis 1 minus p raised to the power of negative s close parenthesis. This ties the zeta function directly to the distribution of primes. The Riemann hypothesis is one of the seven Millennium Prize problems, with a $1 million reward for anyone who can prove or disprove it. And if proven, it would predict prime distribution with stunning accuracy. There are other unsolved prime mysteries too. Goldbach's conjecture says every even number greater than 2 is the sum of two primes. 4 equals 2 plus 2, 6 equals 3 plus 3, 8 equals 3 plus 5. Verified for numbers up to 4 times 10 raised to the power of 18, but no proof exists. The twin prime conjecture says there are infinitely many twin primes, still unproven. Are there infinitely many Mersenne primes? Unknown. Are there infinitely many Fibonacci primes? Unknown. No proof exists despite centuries of trying. These are just mysteries, mathematical truths we suspect but cannot confirm. And like, comment, subscribe, 